Welcome back to Port Elizabeth, the beautiful city. This is part 20, and we're in the Collegiate Church of St. Mary the Virgin, which was, which was founded at a meeting of citizens under the chairmanship of Captain Francis Evett on the 26th of April, 1824. So just four years after the arrival of the 1820 settlers, they had enough people to set about planning to establish a church here. Now this isn't, uh, doesn't date from 1824, I think it dates, the original church was in the 1830s, but hopefully I researched that and we'll find out. It's a, a bit dark inside, my camera work isn't that professional, but anyway, using a flash I sort of had to make the best of it. Um, real old English style church, you know, a very similar to the one in Grahamstown also, which dates from early 20th, uh, 19th century. So it says here the foundation stone of, of, was laid on the 5th of October 1825. And in the same month, the Reverend Francis McClelland arrived to take up the post of colonial chaplain. Oh, that's the word I was thinking of. And minister of the church. The building was opened in 1832 and in 1895 burnt down by that arsonist lady but rebuilt in a slightly different style and opened again in 1896. And this building is the one that we see here. Apparently one of these stained glass windows, which we might get to, is of some historic importance. Look at the beautiful uh, wooden uh, structure, roof structure. Uh, actually, I quite like the fact that I've taken this angled shot I don't like the fact that that is as dark as anything, but that's the extension of the nave towards Main Street, which would be outside there. And a little rose window up the top. That's for the naughty people at the back of the church. And that's, I think, looking towards the main sort of pulpit area and where the choir stand. Oh, no, wait, that's a side. So these are the pews looking that way. And there's this whole setup here is a some sort of commemoration, I think. Let's see if we go there. Yeah, this is looking to the, what's it called? Anyway, it's the area where the, the inside is all set, the choir and the ministers. I think he, the pulpit's there on the right. Could be wrong. Anyway, lovely stained glass, eh? Yeah, so this is this thing on the side there. Beautifully, I mean, you've got to retain this sort of stuff. It's so historic. I wish I could read what's on that plug, but I can't. I know one of these stained glass windows is very old. It was brought out from the UK, from some church that burnt down or something. So that was my brief visit to the St. Mary's. And then I ended up visiting Fisher's Jewelers in Main Street. That's the Art Nouveau building that opened in 1911. And by this stage, 2014, it was just a business which I think was about to shut. So I was quite quite fortunate this lady, I'm not sure who she is, showed me around inside this quite historic building, which used to be the main jewelers in town. The fish is still survives in uh, warmer park. And yeah, so in there, I was. This was the original Fisher's building from the 19th century, mid 19th century. And upstairs, of all things, you had people working on musical instruments, um, kind of repairing them. 
So having had a brief view inside Fisher's, I was back up walking past the side of the library and, and that's the name, yeah, St. Mary's Terrace. Why didn't I think of that? Is the street that runs outside St. Mary's. Savage Memorial Hall. The view down the side of the uh, of the library. So this is heading back towards White's Road and you get a different perspective of Plain House on the left and that St. Augustine's uh, subsidiary buildings, for want of a better word. There they are, running up White's Road and now we're under the balcony of the Opera House, which I still don't think I've shown yet in this whole project and we're going to miss it again this time. So that's the Grand Hotel emerging up on the left there. They own these garages here, I think, and and that's the grand the sort of main part of the hotel there, the grey. Um, then on the self same outing, I went to Settlers Park, which hopefully we can find a little bit more about it. It's on the Duncan. This is Halleck Road, with the entrance to the park down there, between these gate posts. So we're going to see this gate, which actually has the words 1820 settlers on. And my ship, my great-great-grandparents, or whatever they were, their ship was the Chapman. And 1820 settlers parks. So I don't know why the Chap. Chapman got such a, you know, look at these flowers, eh? Strelitzia. So there was talk of turning the Settlers Park into an actual or proper botanical garden in the 80s, but that never happened, which in a way is good because it retains its kind of semi-wild sort of look However, the place has been infiltrated by vagrants and it's no longer really a safe place to visit. But anyway, so I had to see that. But we've reached the end of this outing, so I think I'm going to call it a day on it. Um, we'll wait for another adventure.